In the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation, there are currently two main competing technologies when it comes to alternatives to the internal combustion engine, battery electric vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles. The former takes power from the electricity grid or another power source and stores that power as electrochemical energy in the battery pack. The hydrogen fuel cell, the latter, takes hydrogen generated away from the vehicle itself and stores it on board, combining it with oxygen from the air outside the vehicle using a special membrane made of a catalyst that encourages the oxygen and hydrogen to combine to form water and electricity. Aside from the obvious differences in the way they store energy on board, the battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles are ultimately pretty similar underneath. They both take electrical energy and turn it into kinetic energy using a motor or motors attached to the vehicle drivetrain. And their individual methods of refueling, charging stations for battery electric cars and hydrogen refueling stations for fuel cell vehicles, has caused both EVs and HEVs some significant headaches, namely a lack of public charging and refueling infrastructure. But while that was reasonably easy to fix in terms of battery electric vehicles, the challenge for hydrogen fuel cell vehicles is a lot harder. Initially, the lack of charging infrastructure was the number one reason why people didn't switch to electric vehicles, along with the vehicle cost, that is. And it's also one of the reasons why Tesla decided to build its own charging network in the form of the supercharger network for its customers to use. In the past 10 years or so, charging infrastructure availability has become less and less of a problem for many owners and would-be owners thanks to improved rapid charging along major routes and more accessible so-called destination charging in public and major city areas. And while there are some confusions over charging, like which network a charging station is or isn't part of, or indeed which charging station works with which car, electric car refueling is far easier than it once was. Hydrogen, however, is still very much clearly stuck at the not enough infrastructure and the what there is is unreliable point that electric car charging infrastructure was at not so long ago. In fact, I've seen reviews lately that praise hydrogen fuel cell vehicles like the Honda Clarity FCV and the Hyundai Nexo, only to describe the refueling experience as hellish. Why is that? Well, like the early days of electric cars, hydrogen fueling stations are few and far between. And while you might think hydrogen filling is as easy as filling up with gasoline, it's a little closer to electric car charging than gas pumping. First, you've got to find a pump that works with your car. While there are two different standard nozzles for different pressures, there's no guaranteeing that the one you need will work, and then you're most likely going to find just one or two filling pumps at every location, meaning that if there is a problem with the pump, you're SOL, just like you were in the early days of EVs. If you're an electric car owner, you're going to find this familiar, especially if you owned an electric car back in the good old frontier days of tech. But unlike electric car charging infrastructure and fixing those problems, fixing hydrogen refueling infrastructure woes is a lot harder to fix. First, there's the physical cost of the filling pump and the tanks. If you go for a compressor-based hydrogen fueling station where hydrogen is both heavily compressed and heavily cooled for storage and refueling purposes, you're not going to have much change from 2 million US dollars. That's a lot more expensive than the fifty dollars to $100,000 that a DC rapid charging station costs to buy and install. More affordable costs for DC quick charging can be achieved if you go for a lower power DC quick charging station. As a side to all of this, it is worth noting too that while you can install a lower power DC quick charger, say use 30 kilowatts instead of 50, and the cars will charge a little more slowly, you can't easily install a lower pressure refueling station for hydrogen because the cars themselves are designed to operate at one of two common pressures. Then there's space for the refueling infrastructure, which is far larger than it is for an electric vehicle charging station. While EV charging infrastructure does require a decent electricity supply, these stalls and even the transformers are relatively small. Installing hydrogen fueling infrastructure, though, requires making a tank underground or having the space for above ground storage, as well as space and power for the various cryogenic storage compressors and pumping compressors needed to safely store hydrogen 400 plus degrees below zero. 
Where electric vehicles thrive then is the ability to refuel pretty much anywhere where there's a power outlet. You can't refuel your hydrogen fuel cell vehicle at home right now, although there are some products being promised that might do just that. This all requires extra travel time to be planned in to refuel on daily commutes, unlike, assuming people can plug in at home, simply plugging the car in overnight to charge. At the end of the day, consumers value convenience. At one point in history, the lure of a hydrogen fuel cell car was greater because people could travel on average further per fill than a battery electric vehicle could in terms of charging, and they could also refuel in less time. But battery electric vehicle energy density has improved far more quickly than fuel cell storage energy density, meaning electric cars are closing the gap. With battery charging infrastructure now far more common and rapid charging offering even faster times, hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles are less appealing to many buyers than they once were. Could there be a revolution for hydrogen? Maybe, but battery has the edge right now. New ways of storing hydrogen, which revolve around making hydrogen on site from far safer and easier to transport ammonia, could give hydrogen fuel vehicles a leg up. And since ammonia is so much cheaper and easier to store as well, it could hold the key to making hydrogen fuel cells more affordable in the long term. There is one more hope on the horizon if you're a hydrogen fuel cell fan that many commentators miss. While battery electric vehicles are generally accepted to be better for short-range travel, something even Nikola Motors recently acknowledged by announcing battery electric versions of their full-size trucks, long-distance hydrogen filling infrastructure being promised by Nikola for use by its trucks might make hydrogen more affordable for everyone. You see, Nikola is building a network of high-capacity hydrogen fueling stations for long-distance trucking, pumping hydrogen that's generated on-site through electrolysis, essentially making it zero emission, unlike most hydrogen today, which is produced by steam reforming natural gas. While it's doing this primarily for trucking clients, it's also going to sell hydrogen to hydrogen fuel cell car owners, spreading costs out far more than your standard several million dollar just for cars filling station downtown. And when you reduce that cost, you do make it far more enticing. Although batteries still have the edge. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on a single episode. And if you want to support the show, there are three ways you can do that in the show notes below. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until next time, keep evolving. Keep evolving.